Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. It's always a privilege and an honor and actually quite a thrill to be able to be with you like this and to bring a word that God has put in my heart for you. We're on the second part of our series on walking by faith. We've got an earlier video. You probably want to go back and watch that too if you get the chance. But this message stands on its own. It doesn't need for you to have the first one, but I do believe it will bless you and strengthen you in your faith if you get a chance to go back and listen to it. You know, I was thinking about when I first came to the Lord and I would hear my pastor use all these Bible phrases that I couldn't understand. And one of them was, we as Christians look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are unseen. And he would say, because the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Now, I found out later, he's quoting 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18. I didn't know what he was talking about, but I learned he's talking about our vision in life on a level that's beyond what can be seen by the natural human eye and can only be seen by the eye of faith. He was talking about spiritual vision, something that springs up from the inside. It's not based on what we see and hear and feel and all of that on the outside. And he also talked about as Christians, he said, we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm like, what in the world does that mean? He was talking about what it says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, where it says, we walk by faith and not by sight. And he explained to me, we shouldn't rely on our understanding or our experiences to guide us, but we need to listen to what God is saying in the spirit realm, in the Bible, talking to us. He was saying that, you know, we don't lean on our own understanding, but we use our own understanding, but we lean on what God says. By the way, I hope that you subscribe to our channel. This is a great time to do it and that you would share it with somebody you know who wants to get these simple, plain Bible truths. So we're talking about walking by faith, and I want to share a handful of reasons that I believe will bless you about walking by faith and some of the challenges of it. First of all, our natural senses can deceive us. Not everything we see or hear is real or true or even valid. And more than ever, Christians need discernment these days, that ability from the Holy Spirit to detect truth from falsehood and lies and disinformation, because we can be fooled, we can be tricked, we can be deceived. So we want to learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit and find out what is really true and what's really right. Second, our own knowledge and experiences can misguide us. You know, I was thinking about how I had a bad experience with a dog when I was a child, and for a while there, I thought all dogs were out to bite me, but then I learned better. One of my friends went to a restaurant locally and years ago, and he had some food that he thought wasn't that great, and he told everybody that the restaurant's bad and unfit to eat in, everybody should avoid it. In fact, all the restaurants of that chain across the country had terrible food. He didn't know. He'd only been in one that one time. Sometimes a person has a bad experience in a church and has been very hurt or rejected. And now they decide that every church, all churches, all people who go to churches are hypocrites and mean and churches should never be attended by anyone. And you know, any of us could have had negative experiences in the past that make us doubt that God is good or that he loves us and all of that. Then number three, Life is full of temptations and traps and snares. There are people who can lead us astray and cause us to end up being brokenhearted, ashamed, or embarrassed, or worse. And we can't really rely on our own understanding because our own understanding can put us into toxic relationships and bad situations. And we need the input and the discernment from the Holy Spirit to make it in life. But I want to tell you, don't expect walking by faith to be easy. Many people think that if you're following God and walking in his will, everything will go easy. Well, it won't. Many times, while you're obedient and following God, you'll end up having a lot of rejection, a lot of ridicule, people coming against you. And it won't always be the non-believers. Many times, it's Christians who are coming against you when you're trying to obey God and be faithful to him, or maybe well-meaning friends or family members. And I had to discover that not everybody in my life is going to be supportive of my walk with the Lord. So you need to be prepared for that and don't let it steal your faith. You know, if Jesus suffered opposition, the disciples suffered opposition, God's people throughout history have suffered opposition. Don't think you'll slip by with no opposition or rejection. You know, we've been taught wrongly if we've been taught that if something is of God, it'll all just fly and be easy and just go so smoothly all the time. It just doesn't work like that. 
There are many times that there's opposition on every hand and there's people resisting you. And that's why we walk by faith and not by sight. I think about the Apostle Paul who gave us that phrase about walking by faith and not by sight. Yet he was used by the Lord to lead thousands of people to the Lord and work mighty miracles and deliverances and signs and wonders, but he had all kinds of problems. He was attacked. He was beaten. They tried to stone him to death. They locked him up in prison for years at a time. And then while he's in prison, his enemies started telling people, he said, well, if Paul's so blessed, if he's so anointed, why isn't he rich? Why isn't his ministry team prospering? How come they're not walking around all rich and healthy and happy? Why aren't they riding around great horses and chariots and all that? There's got to be something wrong with the guy, something wrong with his team. God isn't blessing them. Something wrong with them. And here Paul is trying to bring them a deeper faith to teach them that a person's life doesn't consist of the abundance of things that they possess. And you know, why would he suffer so many things if what he was saying wasn't true? His vision was to help us get beyond this present time and these present things and to look ahead, look ahead to our eternal reward. He says, we don't look at our temporary circumstances, but by faith, we've got faith in the power of God and in the spirit realm where Jesus is. And we're walking by faith, not by sight. And faith will lead you to spiritual knowledge. Like in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 1, he says, we know that if the tent, that's our earthly home, he's talking about our body, this temporary fleshly body. If it's destroyed, we have a building, something permanent from God. That building's the new body, the resurrected body in heaven. And he doesn't say, I hope, or I sure, I'm thinking about this a lot. But you know, walking by faith leads to knowledge. He said, I know this. And when you begin walking by faith, you begin to receive by faith, you begin to experience by faith, you begin to learn by faith, and soon you will know the spiritual things of God by faith. Those unseen things that are not temporary, but eternal. And it's not wishful thinking, it's not fantasy, none of those things. It's not even about what they used to call blind faith, just believing something that has no evidence. Our faith is based on the reality. It's based on the word of God, on historical and geographical evidence, historical events, eyewitness testimonies, and even our own personal experience. I know the changes that began in my life when I got born again, when I asked Jesus to come into my heart. Then he tells us in Ephesians 4 and verse 1, He says, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called. Our walk as Christians is different from the walk of people who don't believe or who don't know the Lord or they don't love him. We love God and we show and share that love with other people. And we're walking with Jesus in a very real way. And walking by faith isn't just having a prayer time or a Bible study, but it's a day-to-day walk in the company of my Lord and Savior and friend, Jesus Christ. Faith is beyond feelings. You know, when I was a new Christian, I was just longing for a vision, a revelation, or supernatural sign of the calling and anointing of God on my life. And one night I went outside and prayed while staring at the sky, waiting for an angelic uh, army of angels on flying horses to come across the sky, or at least some cherubims to fly across the sky. After several hours, I was willing to share, I'd settle for a couple cupids from Valentine's Day, anything. I saw a shooting star, saw some airplanes, but no angelic armies, no cherubims, no cupids. And then when the sun was coming up, I quit looking for signs in the sky and instead started thanking God for saving me, for calling me. I started thanking him for my church and my church friends and for my pastor, for the Bible. I started thanking him for his presence in my life, whether I felt it or not. While I was doing that, I could feel my faith getting stronger. Scriptures began to flood my mind and I began to believe them in a new way. I believed that God saved me. I believed that God loved me. I believed that God called me. I believed that he would be with me and he would never leave me. He would never forsake me no matter what I felt. And that was beyond my feelings. It was a spiritual recognition, a spiritual knowing of what I had. And as I got to get into the word of God, I could just feel and believe that the Lord loved me, not because of what I saw in the heavens, because I didn't see anything. I knew because the Holy Spirit reminded me on the inside what God had done in my life, what he was doing in my life. I began to get faith for what he was going to do in my life. He was moving me from going by my feelings to going by faith. And somehow I knew his presence was with me. His giftings and blessings were all there. 
not because of my feelings, but because of faith. And that enabled me to move on, to move ahead and take the next steps walking in faith. And you won't always feel God's presence, but his presence is by faith, not by feelings. And I'm so glad that he's with me, even when I'm down in the dumps and even when I'm not feeling anything at all. His presence doesn't depend on my feelings. He's with me when I feel him. And I'll tell you, I love to feel the manifest presence of the Lord, but he's just as present when I'm not feeling him. And it's the same for you. We walk by faith and not by sight. And I want you to be encouraged that if you love Jesus, if you've asked him to be your Lord and Savior, if you're walking with him, I want you to be encouraged that he is with you. He is in you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And it's just such a great time to draw near to him and say, God, I believe in you. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my forgiver. You are my cleanser. You are all that I need in this life. And I know that you have provided for me and you will continue to provide for me throughout my life until I join you in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org. Or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.